Let's welcome in now retired Marine Gunnery Sergeant Jesse Jane Duff. Also with us, RNC Senior Communications Advisor for Black Media Affairs, Paris Denard. Great to see you both. Thanks so much. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, so, Paris, first to you on this. There's some questions about Coca-Cola and, you know, how much this was required here. But, you know, it, we do see this now more and more racial and diversity training uh, being crammed down Americans' throats, not just in the workplace, but also in schools. But if it's a private company, should we be that concerned about it? I mean, it's a private company. Coke can do what they want, right? Private companies can do what, what they want. Um, but the, the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that there are a lot of government uh, assistance programs and incentives that are happening across the country with the Biden administration that are incentivizing certain types of behaviors and trainings and things of that nature. We have to remember that this country is a great country. Uh, I believe in American exceptionalism. I do not believe this country is inherently racist. I don't believe that this country is inherently bad. And whenever you have teachings and, and, and type of trainings that do that, it, it, it taints the mindsets of the worker, private company or in the government. And that's not where we need to be going as a nation, because this will also, I believe, go into our school systems and how our young children are taught to believe about the founding fathers, the founding principles. The RNC chairwoman just wrote an op-ed about Black History Month and how right now, if you look at Black History Month, the mainstream media normally just talks about liberal black Americans and their contributions to black history or the American uh, story. And they ignore the contributions of black Republicans mm -hmm. because they, they, they are not being accurate in how they depict our story. And so that's what we have to be mindful of. Well, you, you mentioned that, Paris, and it was fascinating to watch the House hearing with uh, Maxine Waters, and I think she was, that was her. No, I'm sorry, Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, I was thinking about the other uh, Robin Hood hearing from this week, but the, the Sheila Jackson Lee hearing on H.R. 40 this week, hearing the stories of Herschel Walker and Burgess Owens and Larry Elder getting to testify during Black History Month and talking about their perspective, much different, you know, a lot of times than the kind of the, the, the monolithic myth that we hear so often right. from Democrats. Uh, Jesse Jane, you know, this might be okay for private companies to do, but I don't think it actually is. I mean, you know, if we, if we strip away which races we're talking about here, I think most people from a common sense standpoint would say, look, you know, giving you know, someone preference just solely based on their race sounds wrong when, you, when you're not talking about black versus white, when you're just talking about the issue of race. That is not uh, something to think a lot of Americans are comfortable with. And guess all EEO laws, all equal opportunity laws are not written based upon race. They're written as if any race can be discriminated in against. If you were to look at any policy of any human resources within any company, it says discrimination based upon race. And here, Coca-Cola comes right out and does that against white people. It, it, it essentially, they put white in a format and, dis, and decided to state that there was ignorance among whites. And if we were to replace the word white with any other race, it would be a lawsuit. So at the same time, I think every white employee has an opportunity here to go and press forward against Coca-Cola for the statements that were made against them flagrantly, a blanket statement of identity because of race is inappropriate regardless of what race you're discussing. There's no such thing as reverse racism. Racism is racism, regardless of any race that you are creating a hostile or intimidating work environment. And I would dare to say that if I were working for Coca-Cola right now, that would have cr created a very hostile and intimidating work environment for anybody who happened to be Caucasian. This is something that nobody can help when they are, are born on this great earth by God. And to turn around and flip it that you are arrogant or ignorant or any other word that they used was inappropriate. So it doesn't matter to me. I think that they have every... Uh, employees within Coca-Cola have a right to present this in some form of a lawsuit if that's so which they choose or make a complaint, a formal complaint, and they are all owed an apology. Yeah, we'll see if any lawsuits are filed. If, if it really were mandatory, I would imagine we'll see those lawsuits. If not, Coca-Cola says it was not mandatory, um, but we'll see what comes of it.